I'm Lewis Vaughan Jones, this is BBC News. Now on BBC News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. This is Focus on Africa. I'm the Quest for Our top stories today. Sudan's warring military factions hold talks aimed at bringing about a ceasefire to get humanitarian aid to those in desperate need. More than 400 people have died following torrential rain, flood and landslides have hit eastern DRC. Also, apologise, the Prime Minister of the Caribbean island of St Kitts and Nevis wants the British monarchy to say sorry for its historic role in the slave trade. Also in the programme, sometimes even apex predators need a helping hand. We speak to a pair of award-winning conservationists from Kenya and Cameroon about the lessons they have learned from living with lions. And in the sport with Mimi today, Nigeria's Victor Osimhen becomes top African scorer in the Serie A history. Hello and welcome to Focus on Africa from BBC News. Well, as fighting continues in Sudan, Saudi Arabia has confirmed that talks between the country's warring military factions are underway. The meetings, brokered by the US and Saudi governments, began in Jeddah on Saturday and are the first since fighting broke out more than three weeks ago. There's been no comment from the Sudanese army nor the paramilitary rapid support forces. The BBC's Barbara Plett Usher has been monitoring the talks from Nairobi and told us more about the immediate priorities for the negotiators. Now, authorities in the Democratic Republic of Congo have confirmed over 400 deaths in floods and landslides in the east of the country. At least 160 people remain missing following days of heavy rain. Today, President Felix Tshisekedi declared a national day of mourning. And in neighbouring Rwanda, over 9,000 people have been left homeless as rivers of mud and debris left at least 130 dead with homes swept away and critical infrastructure, including bridges and roads, utterly destroyed. So whilst on a visit to Burundi, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, offered his condolences to the victims in both the DRC and Rwanda. And he added that this was yet another illustration of accelerating climate change and its disastrous impact on countries that have done nothing to contribute to global warming. Well, Igor Garcia Barbero is a spokesperson for the medical charity Médecins Sans Frontières, and he gave us an update on the unfolding disaster in South Kivu, a region already dealing with a humanitarian crisis for displaced persons fleeing conflict. Now, the Prime Minister of the Caribbean nation of St. Kitts and Nevis has told the BBC that his country is not totally free as long as King Charles III remains head of state. Dr. Terence Drew said he'd welcome an apology from the monarchy for its historic role in the slave trade. Now, there are 14 Commonwealth countries where the king remains head of state. Eight are in the Caribbean, where questions linger over the crown's role in the slave trade and whether or not to break ties with the former colonial ruler. In 2021, under the leadership of Mia Motley, Barbados, of course, became the world's newest republic after officially removing the late Queen Elizabeth II as its head. Our correspondent, Celestina Olulorade, reports. Well, still to come on the programme, Mimi has all the top sports stories and a landmark goal for Egypt's Mo Salah as Liverpool beat Brentford.
Now, when it comes to endangered species from Africa, we often refer to elephants and rhinos. However, the WWF has officially classified the most magnificent symbol of Africa, the lion, as vulnerable. In the last three generations, numbers have dropped by a staggering 40%. Despite having no natural predators, there are only around 23,000 African lions left in the wild. So what's killing them off? Well, it's us climate change, poaching, and habitat loss. There are two African conservationists who have been recognized by the prestigious Whitley Fund for their work in preserving uh, lions. Dr. Bala runs a foundation, and it's called uh, Iwaso Lions in northern Kenya. She's helped to increase the population from 11 in 2008 to 50 last year. And also we have Dr. Serge Alexis, who works in the Cameroon, which is one of the three remaining hotspots for lions in West and Central Africa. I sat down with them for a chat. And there's more of that interview online. Time for the sport, Mimi. Thank you very much, Loquesta. We start with a memorable day for one African star. Ivorian legend Didier Drogba is among the many people to congratulate Nigerian striker Victor Osimhen, who has become the top African goal scorer in Italian Serie A history. And that's all the sport. Lucrezia. Mimi, thank you very much. Well, that's it from myself. You can get hold of us on social media at Mimosa Fawas, and I'm at Lucrezia Burek. From the team, cheerio.